Hi guys, I'm Emily. Welcome to my channel. Today's video will be just a little bit different. It's kind of a product review of sort. I'm going to be showing you how I use just a single color. This is Daniel Smith Moon Glow to create a misty, foggy effect in a painting. I love all Daniel Smith watercolor paints, but this single color is just amazing. Be sure to watch all the way to the end to see the entire demonstration, and I hope you enjoy. If you want to follow along and try this painting using my reference photo, you can download it using the link in the description. I'm using a block of Arches 140 pound rough pressed cotton watercolor paper, size 9 by 12 inches. I have an assortment of brushes, mostly larger ones because one of my main goals with this painting is to create a dusty, foggy effect to intentionally lose some of the details and larger brushes will help limit how much detail I can include. As I mentioned, this video is also a demonstration of the beautiful subtleties you can achieve in a painting using just a single paint color. In this case, Moon Glow. In my opinion, Daniel Smith makes some of the finest watercolor pigments on the market. They have an incredible variety of colors, and many of these beautiful paints are specialized. You can experiment with luminescent, pearlescent, metallic, iridescent, and duochrome colors. Moon Glow is actually a three pigment blend. It's a combination of anthraquinoid red, ultramarine blue, and viridian gray. The resulting neutral violet color is wonderful for shadow areas, skies, or evening snow. It has excellent light fastness, so it will not fade over time. It's beautifully transparent and low staining. I really enjoy doing single color studies from time to time, but they're especially fun when you're using such a complex and mysterious pigment. Using a large, round Richeson squirrel hairbrush, I wet my paper all over, but carefully avoiding areas where the sun is hitting the silhouettes of the horse's heads and backs. I drop in some large brush strokes and gently blot some watered down color into the top portion of the painting. You can already see some lovely separation of the blue and red in the paint. Keeping my values very light, I quickly paint around the horse's head, allowing the wet paint to blend together on the wet paper. I grab some darker paint to reinforce the shapes and values of the trees in the background. I lightly paint around the second horse. I'm careful to avoid the white areas of my horses, but I'll wet the paper inside where their shadows will go. I add some color to the foreground using side-to-side -side brush strokes. While the paint is still a little wet, I can add suggestions of tree branches, knowing that their edges will soften. I don't want any hard edges in the background since the focal point of the painting is the galloping horse in front. To make the legs look like they're kicking up dust and dirt, I paint the shadow side a little darker with a defined edge but keep the front of the leg, vague and undefined, working wet and wet. There really aren't any rules for which areas you should paint first or in what order. I just kind of go where my eye takes me, but I always have to take into consideration the timing aspect of watercolor, always being aware of which areas are still wet and which parts of the painting are beginning to dry. This aspect of watercolor painting just takes patience and practice to figure it out before it becomes intuitive. The shadow areas of the second horse are relatively light. I want the legs to fade into white to give the illusion of our horse being immersed in sunlit dust. I make the head and neck darker. This helps the viewer understand that the head is coming towards us and is rising above the dust.
When recreating a foggy, dusty, or misty effect in a painting, it's important to notice that elements in the scene that are further away will be lighter in value, and objects that are closer will appear darker in value. By mastering this simple observational skill, you can make your paintings look very realistic. Fine line details are not always necessary. I darken the head some more, switching to a smaller brush. Don't be afraid to really push your values darker in the areas of greatest visual interest. Again, I'm only painting with moon glow, but by using a wide variety of values, shapes, and textures, and with the complexity of this colors three pigment composition, I think it's giving off the illusion of more colors. I spent the most time painting the horse in the foreground since he is the focal point. Using my reference photo as a guide, I went really dark in the shadows, blending in more watered down paint to create mid-tone areas that have some light hitting them. To connect the belly and the hind leg, I can charge wet paint into wet paint. This helps you lose the edge. You never want there to be any hard edges in a shadow. An artist friend of mine, Dan Sprick likes to say, lose edges wherever you can. With just a few light brush strokes, I create the effect of dirt spraying up beneath the horse's hooves. You'll notice there is no defined edge where the hooves meet the ground. I'm leaving the backlit mane mostly untouched, just adding a few fine hairs. For the tail, it's also just a few little brush strokes. I add some spatter effect, and once the horse's head is mostly dry, I can go back in and add some darker touches of paint to the nose and eye. A little more color in the foreground also helps balance the composition. I try to match the values to those of the background trees. I used a dry paper towel to lift and blot out some of the wet paint spatter and I was really delighted to see a beautiful delicate blue-green revealed. This entire process was such a delight. I would love to see you give Moonglow a try. Tag me on Instagram so I can see what you're creating. If you enjoyed this video and found it valuable, be sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you're new here and turn on notifications so you never miss a single video. I'll be posting new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And be sure to share with all your friends who might be interested in watercolor. And if you want to stay in the loop, follow me on Instagram. Thanks, have a great day.